final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 12441 in the name of Patricia Ferguson on young people and the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Day 2015. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And I now call on Patricia Ferguson to open the debate. Ms Ferguson, seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As you're aware, Parliament holds this parliamentary debate every year on or around Commonwealth Day. And while the motion we consider tonight was tabled in my name, it is not solely my debate, but a debate that is sponsored by the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association or CPA branch executive. And we will hear from my colleagues on the branch executive, Margaret Mitchell, Tabby Scott and Sandra White, in the course of the debate. The theme of this year's Commonwealth Day is young people. And that seems to me to be a particularly relevant theme to pursue in a Commonwealth of 2.2 billion citizens, 60% of whom are under the age of 30. And as part of the celebration of Commonwealth Day, the CPA branch will hold a reception immediately after this debate, which will be attended by university students from around Scotland and by young people nominated by the 13 Consul Generals and Honorary Consul Generals representing Commonwealth countries who are based in Scotland. And immediately before this debate, we held a roundtable discussion on the issues of the Commonwealth and specifically on the issue of violence against women and girls. And we were joined in that roundtable discussion by 22 young people from around Scotland's universities and they join us in the public gallery this evening. On behalf of the branch, I'd like to thank each and every one of them for their insightful contributions, for their challenging questions to us and for the thought-provoking issues that they have given to us and that we will no doubt reflect upon and take forward. They encapsulated exactly what this Commonwealth should be about and what this particular uh, celebration should be about too. So we thank them for their contribution. The issue of violence against women and girls is, of course, not, reflect, uh, uh, sorry, is not uh, confined to one region, but affects us all. At a recent conference that my colleague Sandra White, Cara Hilton and myself attended, we heard Baroness Scotland speak of her time as a government minister pursuing this issue. She engaged researchers from the University of Lancaster to make sure that she had the very best arguments at her fingertips. And they estimated that the cost to the state, that's in England and Wales, of domestic violence was £23 billion. A staggering figure, and one that she, Baroness Scotland, used to persuade her cabinet, cabinet colleagues that they had a financial stake as well as a moral obligation to tackle the issue of domestic violence. Now, that same research demonstrated that for every one pound spent on initiatives to tackle and to raise the uh, profile of combating domestic abuse, for every one pound spent, six pounds were saved. Presiding officer, there are 53 countries in the Commonwealth. How much money could be saved if domestic violence could be eliminated? A challenge, yes, but one that is perhaps worth aiming for. But of course, domestic violence is not the only form of violence that women and girls are exposed to. We do not know how many girls normally resident in Scotland have been subjected to FGM, female genital mutilation. What we do know is that it is an abhorrent practice. It is physically and psychologically damaging. It is not a requirement of any religion, Indeed, some 350 faith leaders have asserted that it forms no part in the practices of their faith. But still the culture persists. And often, as we discussed with the young people we met this afternoon, it is often the women in society who are at least in part uh, regarding this as something that is desirable for their children and their grandchildren. We have to challenge and combat these views wherever they occur. And I warmly welcome the additional funds announced by the First Minister this week. But it remains the case that there have been no successful prosecutions in any of the jurisdictions of the UK to date. And we must be alive to the issue 
and do everything we can to raise awareness of it. As was put to us this afternoon, how can we talk to other countries in the Commonwealth about their practices if we ourselves have been unable to prosecute people for this crime? There have, however, of course, been prosecutions for human trafficking, which have often involved women and sometimes men being forced into forms of modern slavery that forces them to live lives of drudgery and despair. Presiding officer, the world our young people are inheriting has its challenges and its advantages. And to my mind, the internet is both a challenge and an advantage. At a recent CPA conference, we heard examples of the kinds of exploitation that can occur online. This particular presentation was, I have to say, harrowing. We heard of one website hosted in the USA, which operated on the basis that if you didn't pay its operators a sum of money, it would post online explicit photographs of you. Even where women were sure that no such photograph existed, they paid up because they were afraid of the consequences of family, friends or employers finding out. In some cases, the situation was much worse, with, of course, children and young people being abused and film of that abuse being shown online. Now, governments around the Commonwealth have taken action of various kinds to prevent such abuse, but it is not easy to legislate against. And to demonstrate how difficult it is, we were uh, told that some 19 years ago, it was estimated that 18% of the pornography exploiting children was hosted in websites in the UK. This figure is now down to 1%, which is a very good thing. But clearly that abuse is still continuing and has probably increased. But it's just that those websites are now hosted elsewhere. So it's extremely important that we work together and this is an area where I think that the Commonwealth could really play its part. And we already have the Commonwealth Cyber Crime Initiative as a good example of how that work can be taken forward. Presiding officer, it was put to us this afternoon, and I very much agree, that we will not tackle violence against women and girls unless men and boys understand and are involved in our campaigns. And I would particularly identify the White Ribbon campaign as a way in which men and boys can be involved in helping to eradicate that kind of crime and of standing up and saying, we will not be part of it and we will not condone it happening. And I know that a number of football teams and rugby teams have now adopted the wearing of the White Ribbon on their strips and we should do more to encourage that. Presiding officer, the advantage of the Commonwealth is that we can discuss these issues and support one another in finding solutions to these problems, which beset most countries in the world. But we do so knowing that we share the strength of 53 countries. We have to speak up on issues like this. We have to recognise when we will disagree. We have to support one another to change. But we also have to articulate our shared values of democracy and equality. And the Commonwealth Charter is one way in which we explain our values. Officer, in her message to the Commonwealth this year, Her Majesty the Queen said that, and I quote, the Commonwealth can only flourish if its ideas and ideals continue to be young, fresh and relevant to generations. Very apt words for someone who has been at the heart of that Commonwealth for so many years. And it's often said that young people are our future, but they also live in the here and now. And so we must listen to them and encourage them to be part of shaping that happy and fulfilled future that we all wish for them. Many thanks. I now call on Sandra White to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. Four minutes or thereby, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I thank Patricia Ferguson for her contribution and welcome the young people in the gallery. Uh, Presiding Officer, this time last year we were Team Commonwealth gearing up to the Glasgow 2014 Commonwealth Games, certainly in my city of Glasgow and throughout Scotland, there was huge excitement and expectation as to what the Games were going to deliver, and deliver they certainly did. Being in Glasgow at the time of the Games was fantastic. The city was buzzing, and I've honestly never seen Glasgow or parts of Scotland so full of energy. Walking down the street, seeing people from across the globe was simply amazing. And thanks to the people of Glasgow and the 15,000 volunteers, everyone was treated to the friendliness of welcomes. Over the period, we played host to 4,500 athletes and over 1 million spectators, making the Games one of the most successful of all times. 
Of course, to us, the legacy that the Games gave us was equally important. And I would like to congratulate all involved uh, on ensuring that not only were the Games successful, but they also gave and are giving us an amazing legacy. Since the Games Legacy 2014 has already supported over 150 projects to improve community facilities, and by 2016 will have created 150 community sports hubs. It's also established over 100 cultural programmes with links to 26 Commonwealth countries and created 150 Young Scot Youth Legacy Ambassadors. I think we should all be very, very proud of that legacy. And although the list goes on, and the key point is that in many of these cases, it's young people who are benefiting and it's young people who are making such a difference. So whether it was 21-year-old Charlie Flynn winning gold in the boxing in the Commonwealth Games, youngest ever medalist, the inspiring 13-year-old Era Davies winning bronze in the swimming pool, young people across Scotland and throughout the Commonwealth were all winners, actually. Of course, since then, the eyes of the world have also been in Scotland for other reasons. Namely, the referendum on Scottish independence, and regardless of the outcome, one thing is clear, is the profound effect it had on our society and especially our young people. 16 and 70 year olds were the first time given the vote, which led to unprecedented interest in what kind of society, what kind of future they wanted to see. It also led to an incredible amount of political engagement, not only from 16 and 70 year olds, but people even younger, and of course many older people as well. And this interest and engagement is sure to continue as the franchise for 16, 17 year olds to vote has been devolved to coincide with next year's Scottish Parliament elections. And I think that's something we should celebrate also. And I would like to see the co other Commonwealth uh, countries perhaps pick up on that. The referendum taught us that given the opportunity many young people have an incredibly important role to play in shaping the future and that given that chance they are very, very willing to do so. And as I said previously, I sincerely hope that all countries of the Commonwealth can learn from this. And given that the theme this year is a young Commonwealth, young people with potential who play a vital role in sustainable development and democracy is the title. And we met many of these young people earlier today, as Patricia Ferguson has already mentioned. A roundtable discussion where they engaged and contributed passionately and constructively on the topic of violence against women and girls. And I do look forward to meeting them all later on at six o'clock at the parliamentary reception. Presiding officer, it has already been stated that 53 member countries of Commonwealth have a combined population of 2 billion. 60% of the people are under the age of 30 years. And I believe it is our duty and all of us to listen to these young people and through them and the relevant organisations such as the CPA and others and our parties, uh, sorry, partners in the rest of the Commonwealth, we should be working towards a secure and sustainable future for all of us. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. I now call on Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Margaret Mitchell. Uh, Presiding Officer, I congratulate Patricia Ferguson on uh, introducing this motion today, part of which recognises the great work of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, of which she has been a dedicated member since 2012. The CPA fulfils a vital role within the context of Parliament's relationship with the wider international community, with programmes promoting parliamentary democracy and activities encouraging sustainable development, the reduction of poverty and support of human rights. As co-convener of the cross-party group on violence against women, of course I agree with everything that Patricia Ferguson said about domestic abuse, uh, FGM and other forms uh, of child uh, abuse and agree that this has to be tackled uh, on an international level because unfortunately these problems uh, bedevil uh, every country in the world. However, today um, uh, I want to focus on the theme of young uh, Commonwealth. Uh, the Commonwealth comprises 53 countries with 30% of the world's population, but over half of that population is under the age of 25. Today we join to recognise the young activists and entrepreneurs who contribute such a great deal to their countries and this family of nations. Each story of progress is an inspiration and I know many will be told uh, today. Commonwealth D Day is celebrated on the second Monday of March every year. The celebrations culminate in a multi-faith service at Westminster Abbey attended by the Queen and representatives of the Commonwealth countries and importantly this year 1,000 school-aged children. This is an important, valuable opportunity to reflect on the diversity of the Commonwealth and it reminds us of our shared aspirations for a fairer and more equal world for future generations. It is these generations who will work to achieve their own potential as active members of a global community. 
As Commonwealth Secretary General Kamala Sharma highlights, and I quote, a young Commonwealth recognises the capacity, contribution and potential of young people who play a vital role at the heart of sustainable development and democracy. Terry Smith, from my own constituency, is active both within her own community but also as Vice Chair of the Scottish Youth Parliament. She attended the service on Monday as the representative from the Scottish branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. Her thoughts on the experience echo the positive sentiments of the many hundreds who attend the event each year. And I'm quoting again here. She said, young people are not only uh, are here and now they are our future. Being united with young people from all over the Commonwealth was a unique experience. We are all from different cultures, but what unites us is that we are the future. The inclusion of young people and their empowerment is, I feel, key to the long-term strength of the Commonwealth and, indeed, political structures here in Scotland and the UK, which is why, for example, I certainly support votes at 16. The Scottish branch has worked closely with our Scottish Youth Parliament in the past, supporting Emily Shaw, MSYP, to attend the Jubilee Youth Parliament hosted by the CPA. This allowed young representatives to mark the Jubilee year and discuss issues pertinent to their lives and their future. Recognising and rewarding social concern and philanthropy is at the heart of what Young Commonwealth is about. On Tuesday, four outstanding young people were honoured in the Commonwealth Youth Awards for Excellence in Development Work. This was to reward their exceptional work in promoting youth empowerment, education and entrepreneurship, the environment and gender equality. Their achievements have been chosen from the 16 positive examples selected for recognition this year. Catherine Ellis, Director of Youth at the Commonwealth Secretariat, pointed out, and I'm quoting again, young people throughout the Commonwealth are creating and leading projects that have real and tangible impact. The work of our incredible finalists is proof that young people are integral and integrally involved in the process of change and not simply passive beneficiaries of development. I was going to give a couple of examples, but I can see that my time is running out, so I would conclude, Presiding yes, Officer, by saying want. these are all examples of the many exceptional young people uh, represented on Commonwealth Day this year. They are trailblazers for improving our human rights and ambassadors for an approach rooted in community activism that reaches out across their regions. We may close the debate today in the safe knowledge that the young Commonwealth has a very bright future. Excellent. Many thanks. And I now call on Margaret Mitchell to be followed by Tavish Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to speak in today's debate and to have the opportunity to highlight the unique role the Commonwealth plays in fostering valuable relationships and connections between parliamentarians across the world. The Commonwealth Parliamentarian, uh, Parliamentary Association, CPA for short, mission is to strengthen parliamentary democracy and to promote good governance. And one of the most valuable, yet largely unspoken aspects of the CPA is the contacts which are established through networking and participating in conferences and seminars and the sharing of information between delegates. This opportunity to learn from other countries, both at conferences and in correspondence, which often follows between delegates, is helpful not only for the 31 small nations of the Commonwealth with a population of less than one and a half million, but also for more established democracies such as Scotland and Canada. As Her Majesty the Queen stated in her Commonwealth Day message this year, one simple lesson from history is that when people come together to talk, to exchange ideas and to, ve to develop column goals, wonderful things can happen. However, in the same message, the Queen sounds a cautionary note to the effect that this will only happen if these common goals bridge the various generations and are relevant to each. Which is why today's roundtable discussion with young people from various Commonwealth countries studying here in Scotland was so important. For with 60% of the Commonwealth's 2 billion population under 30 years of age, the phrase, young people are our future, has never been more apt. Presiding Officer, in September 2007, I attended the CPA annual conference in New Delhi. And it was here that I first heard human trafficking described as modern day slavery. And the full extent of this appalling trade which predominantly but not exclusively affects women and children, was made clear to the parliamentarians attending. 
This was because it was given prominence as part of the main business of the conference on the floor of the chamber. And seven years later, the Scottish Government has now introduced its own legislation on human trafficking and exploitation. The bill is being scrutinised by the Justice Committee, where the definition of trafficking, and in particular the word travel, has been thoroughly discussed. Travel is intrinsic uh, to the process of trafficking, and it's important that it covers not just travel between countries, but more alarmingly, travel within countries and even from city to city. Furthermore, uncomfortable issues such as historic childhood sexual abuse and forced marriage are also being tackled here in Scotland with the recently announced public inquiry into historic in-care abuse and the amendment to the Forced Marriage Act, which now makes it a criminal offence carrying a sentence of seven years. There are therefore important steps being taken and we're moving forward and clearly the contributions and thoughts and ideas we heard today from the young people who took part in the roundtable discussion were for me and my colleagues proof positive that the Commonwealth is indeed in safe hands. Many thanks. I now call on Tavish Scott to be followed by Kenny Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank uh, Patricia Ferguson for bringing this debate to Parliament and my colleagues from the branch who have contributed already, and indeed to other members who uh, have, take a very close interest in the work of the CPA and indeed have represented this Parliament uh, on a number of occasions uh, at CPA events in different parts uh, of the uh, world. This is not like, for those who are in the gallery, this is not like the normal debates in this. Uh, Parliament building of knockabout on, on uh, accounting figures as we were debating this afternoon. Uh, uh, it is much more uh, an occasion for those to give voice to some really deep themes and I think uh, I would suggest that uh, colleagues across the benches have done exactly that this afternoon both on uh, a young Commonwealth and what a young Commonwealth should mean and also uh, on tackling challenging, challenging and campaigning against the violence that is brought against women and girls. And that was, as Patricia Ferguson first this afternoon outlined, the purpose of the um, meeting or the discussion we had with students from universities across Scotland uh, earlier this afternoon. If there was one great advantage of that, it got us out of that debate on numbers uh, earlier uh, uh, today. But much more importantly than that, there were two or three points that seemed to me uh, fundamentally important uh, about uh, the next generation and how they are thinking uh, about these issues in a way which uh, should be uh, a lesson for all of us uh, who are legislators in this parliament or indeed uh, play a role in any parliament. The first is the diversity of the Commonwealth. Uh, a number of our student um, colleagues made that argument, I thought, very well today, and they perceptively picked up the reality of the challenge that all of us face when we're representing uh, our parliament at uh, events overseas, and that is the difference of view, the difference of emphasis that comes uh, to bear on those, uh, on the kind of issues which are uh, culturally inbuilt, are culturally incredibly challenging, uh, and mean some hard uh, questions have to be asked. And I uh, thought those points were very well made uh, this afternoon. The second uh, was about the need to recognise what needs to happen here in Scotland on female genital mutilation and indeed on the education of our medical professionals and the education of all of us in that sense. Uh, one of the students uh, is a trainee nurse and she described to the meeting this afternoon the importance of making sure that uh, we learnt, understood and therefore could do something about uh, some of these uh, profoundly important uh, issues and indeed abhorrent practices that need to be tackled uh, here in Scotland as well as in other parts of the world. There is no point in any of us going overseas and lecturing if we cannot deal with matters here in our own uh, country. A point, again, I thought was, that was well made to us uh, this afternoon. Uh, and the final point, and I forget now who made it, but uh, I'd like to pay tribute to Queen Margaret University because it's clear that there's a considerable body of research going on there uh, which I hope will help 
Parliament and help MSPs, uh, no doubt help the government as well, in terms of uh, violence against women and, and girls uh, and ensuring we understand that. There were some interesting questions about definition, uh, a definition that uh, we might all understand in this Parliament and how our prosecution services would understand would be very different in different parts of Africa or India uh, or in other parts of the Commonwealth. Again, a point incredibly well made uh, this afternoon. just want to make two other points, presiding officer, if I may. The first is about the importance that our branch uh, here in, uh, in Holyrood attaches to young people, what we can do. Uh, Malcolm Chisholm very kindly mentioned Emily Shaw, who used to be a constituent of mine, now is a, a law student at Aberdeen University, who had a glittering career in, in a law, indeed in anything, given I know Emily, um, ahead of her. Um, and as, he, as Malcolm Chisholm rightly pointed out, she... Um, was uh, down in London a couple of years back representing uh, the Scottish Youth Parliament but also Scotland at that particular ceremony. We do that every year now. I think that's one of the strong initiatives that we uh, support in ensuring that a couple of our members of the Scottish Youth Parliament uh, do take part in the Commonwealth Day observance ceremony uh, in London for very good reason, not least of which um, the elections to the new Scottish Youth Parliament are taking place right now and indeed I think on Monday I am due to be in Lerwick to uh, no doubt greet warmly the two new members of the Scottish Youth Parliament uh, for Shetland. No doubt colleagues from across Parliament will be doing the same in their own uh, areas. And the final point I wanted to make is about, um, is about international education because again that for me came very strongly across in the discussions we had this afternoon with students from across our uh, Scotland's universities. In my own part of the world in in Shetland, um, when you live in somewhere like Shetland, international education is pretty profoundly important. And one of the strongest um, relationships that currently exists is between the Anderson High School in Lerwick and um, the South Peninsula High School in Cape Town, South Africa, of course, part of the Commonwealth. It is one of the oldest links between a South African school and a UK school. Uh, and what it means for students from my part of the world is that they not only get to go to an astonishing part of the world, but they also get to study, learn and listen to political activists, young and old, but the older ones, of course, can reflect on apartheid, can reflect on what that meant, and can reflect on the modern South Africa that they now uh, live in. Now, that is one heck of a good way to make sure that a generation of uh, young people from uh, Shetland, but this would apply to any school in Scotland, uh, know about the world around them before they enter into the largest parts of life that faces them. This is indeed a young Commonwealth, and we should do all we can to promote it. Many thanks. And now call on Kenny Gibson, after which move the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And first of all, I would like to thank Patricia Ferguson for bringing this debate to the Chamber in light of this year's Commonwealth Day celebrations. And I'd also like to commend the Scottish Mi of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association for its work Microphone, over the past uh, 16 years in supporting the Commonwealth and being fully participative uh, through its parliamentary association and indeed in demonstrating Scotland's commitment to international engagement. Uh, 2015 is a year, as we've heard, that we honour our youth and in doing so we celebrate the vitality and the energy that they bring forth, which is necessary if we are to develop a sustainable future, not just here in Scotland, but across uh, the Commonwealth and beyond. Uh, Commonwealth um, uh, comprises uh, 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 people from across the, the world, uh, across all the continents, uh, and, and what is important is that despite the incredible diversity, there is an intrinsic link uh, through our common histories and indeed a, a dedication to democracy uh, and education. As with all collaborations, nothing of course is, is perfect and some countries within the Commonwealth still struggle with equality and indeed human rights at the very basic level. The militant extremist group Boko Haram threatens Nigeria, mirroring and even suggesting ties to the recent struggles in the West and in the Middle East against ISIS militants. Malala Yousafzai is still pioneering women's rights to education in Pakistan. And India's daughter, the BBC documentary, demonstrates that India too must work to overcome misogyny, as indeed must uh, other societies. And of course, none in the Commonwealth is perfect, and we in our own country must struggle against such things uh, too on a daily basis. And yet, even in these instances of ignorance and violence, hope appears in the efforts of our young generation. Protests against the treatment of Malala and Narbaya filled the streets of cities across the Commonwealth, and social media pages can attest to the interest and the stake that the youth of the Commonwealth place on the values of civil, lib civil liberty and democracy. Uh, colleagues have talked about FGM and trafficking. 
human trafficking, and, and I uh, associate myself completely with the remarks that colleagues have made. And indeed, Tavish Scott has just talked about students and how important students from across the Commonwealth are to Scotland, and indeed bring a tremendous vibrancy uh, to our communities here in Scotland. I, in terms of women's rights, I saw for myself in Tanzania a women's collective that raises and uh, loans fund to uh, its members to allow them in a, in a fairly small way, uh, but in small, very poor, often rural communities, to purchase very important day-to-day -day items, such as, for example, a loom, farming tools, maybe even a, uh, its livestock, uh, which leads, uh, in many cases, to the establishment of independent businesses, which in those communities raise the esteem of which these women are held uh, by the wider community and indeed uh, adds to their uh, acceptance uh, as um, economic uh, contributors. And that has significantly reduced domestic violence uh, with, with regard to the women who are uh, part of those collectives. So by sharing information, experience and protesting about atrocities against basic rights, a human, uh, sorry, young people send a message they will not be passive in the face of blatant injustice. The Commonwealth enables young people from across the globe to find connections given their shared histories. And a tremendous opportunity lies with our younger people to work together to create uh, the more sustainable future we all seek. The Commonwealth facilitates the exchange of ideas across international borders and gives young people a chance to come together and how to discuss positively how best to impact on their surroundings. And in terms of our planet's future, as we've heard, the sheer number of people living in the Commonwealth countries gives youth the opportunity to work together in discovering new ways uh, for our social, political and economic structures to develop. The world is becoming more accessible and reliant on international relations and technology. People may increasingly be begin to identify themselves by the technologies they use or by their views on civil liberties. And young people and their views are vital as they are more adaptable to change and, of course, understandably curious about the world around them. And living within the Commonwealth gives the young people an opportunity to share ideas with peers and find connections uh, given our shared history. Here in Scotland, we are doing our part to support the Commonwealth and deliver opportunities for our own young people to achieve their best possible future and make the most out of their natural abilities through um, everything from, uh, from apprenticeships to, of course, higher education. Finally, uh, uh, Presiding Officer, Commonwealth uh, Day reminds us of our tremendous interconnection and it is a collaboration between our younger generations that will navigate us towards a much brighter future across the world. Thank you. Excellent. Many thanks. I now call on Minister Humza Yousaf to close the debate on behalf of the Government. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I want to thank uh, Patricia Ferguson and the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association for bringing forward this important debate as they do uh, every year. I want to welcome all the guests uh, in the public gallery, the young people, uh, indeed our Consul Generals uh, as well. May I pick out uh, one young person in particular who's travelled all the way from Malawi, young uh, Monica Zonzi, to give a special welcome uh, to her, well known, I think, to probably most of the uh, association uh, here as the person who began that journey for the Queen's baton, really. But more than that, and more importantly than that, I think, uh, she is an ambassador uh, for UNICEF and uh, a great ambassador uh, that she is. Her story, uh, for those that haven't read it or haven't heard it, uh, you must go to your nearest computer after this debate and after you've done in the evening and look at and listen to her story and hear her story. A very powerful one about the uh, legacy, I hope, that we hope to promote uh, together in terms of uh, human rights uh, and that no child should be left behind uh, in the Commonwealth. Uh, fascinating to have so many young people, as Patricia Ferguson said and other speakers reiterated, 60% of that Commonwealth under the age uh, of 30. Uh, I am actually part of that statistic for another 26 days, um, at least. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is important. I think less uh, so perhaps for the countries in the Western Hemisphere, more so uh, for the countries perhaps in the Global South, that this is a huge opportunity for those countries, but only a huge opportunity if those young people are given the support and indeed the cultivation uh, that they need. Uh, many people, of course, have referred to the fact when we had this debate last year, we were in anticipation of the Commonwealth Games. Had those games and what a phenomenal success uh, that event was. Success uh, for Scotland, a uh, success, of course, for the city of Glasgow, a success for the entire uh, United Kingdom, but I would say a success uh, for the entire uh, Commonwealth. Uh, that city that I have the great pleasure of representing, uh, Glasgow, has had many firsts in its time. We know that uh, the first city to grant Nelson Mandela uh, the freedom when he was still incarcerated uh, in prison. 
uh, the first city to ever offer uh, an African-American uh, a degree. And, and James McCoon Smith in the 1800s who got his medical degree from Glasgow University. But perhaps one of our finest firsts to add to that was that the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games was the first ever Commonwealth Games ceremony to also simultaneously raise funds and raise funds for a very good cause indeed for children across the world uh, through UNICEF. Also the first uh, Games, uh, of course, to, to integrate uh, para sports uh, as well. I'm delighted, actually, after this, although I can't stay for the reception, but I'm delighted that I'll be able to open uh, UNICEF's offices uh, in Scotland, perhaps a continuation uh, of that legacy. Thinking about the Commonwealth uh, presiding officer, I, uh, my parents uh, both uh, came from uh, the Commonwealth, different parts of the Commonwealth, my mother from Kenya, uh, father from Pakistan, and the Commonwealth, of course, was something that was born out of difficult circumstances, a challenging part of our history. And I don't just mean that in the UK's history. Of course, Scotland played a huge uh, role uh, in that British Empire. Glasgow, known as the second city of that empire. In fact, visual reminders of that uh, through Glasgow. If you walk through uh, many streets, uh, be it Buchanan Street, uh, be it indeed Ingram Street, uh, Bell Street, all these named after a uh, variety uh, of slave uh, owners. And so Glasgow and Scotland uh, playing a role in that too. But what is important for us, be it in Scotland or the United Kingdom, is to ensure that we learn from that historical past and how do we uh, ensure that the Commonwealth becomes something more positive. And it has become something positive, but it continues to be uh, a, a force for positive good. And I think, again, that was demonstrated uh, throughout the Commonwealth Games because the Games was more than sport. That was a common theme uh, throughout the Commonwealth Games, that there's more than just sport. And so many of the speakers, in fact, all of them have touched upon the issue of human rights in one way or another. Patricia Ferguson incredibly eloquently about the challenges uh, facing women and young girls uh, in the Commonwealth. I know the First Minister, uh, she was then the Deputy First Minister during the Commonwealth Games, held an event for 70 women uh, from across the, the, the spectrum, politics, academia, business, uh, civic society, brought these 70 women together to discuss just some of those challenges and the human rights challenges uh, for women and other speakers have spoke about uh, the Scottish Government's and I think this Parliament's commitment to challenging those uh, issues. Uh, I myself during the Commonwealth Games hosted uh, a conference on trade uh, and aid, so saying that actually uh, aid is important and we continue to be big supporters of giving overseas aid um, to, to, uh, to, to the Commonwealth countries, as is the United Kingdom. I'm very pleased, actually, on that note, that uh, a bill has just passed through the, the House of Commons yesterday through um, the, the hard work and effort, actually, of Michael Moore, Tavis Scott's uh, colleague, uh, that uh, the UK will now be legislating for 0.7%. So, believing in aid and the importance of aid, but realising the best way for the Commonwealth to grow and for that growth and that equality uh, to, to, to come forward will be through, through trade and through equitable and fair trade. Uh, and we're big supporters, most certainly, of that. And, of course, when it came to human rights uh, throughout the Commonwealth Games as a central theme, we had a great uh, example of that through Pride House in the, in the centre uh, of Glasgow, uh, promoting LGBTI rights throughout the Commonwealth from domestically uh, right the way through to some more challenging uh, areas uh, of the Commonwealth when it comes to LGBT rights. Some 6,000 visitors uh, there. I was uh, certainly one of them as well. So those relationships that we have built up through uh, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, uh, through the government, through indeed the Commonwealth Games. We hope to continue to advance human rights very much uh, as part of that. Because flying a flag, as we did with the pride flag above uh, Scottish government buildings, is one thing. And symbolically, it's important. And I'm certainly not looking to take away from those actions. Uh, but what practical actions uh, we can do, I think, is, uh, will, will be the measure, uh, most certainly, of our success. And uh, Tavish Scott and Kenny Gibson there touched upon the fact that some of those discussions can be difficult. We have to be sensitive in the way we do it. Uh, but we have to have those, Commonwealth, uh, those discussions. And the Commonwealth provides, I think, uh, presiding officer, a safe space by which to have some of those discussions. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, end on, on this note, uh, presiding officer, that uh, one of the legacies that I'm proudest of, uh, of the Games, is that I think, I hope, that Scotland has been marked out through its compassion. Uh, I've talked about... The, the raising the money for UNICEF during the Games. But on top of that, uh, I'm very, very proud and pleased of the response from the generous Scottish public to a variety of challenges throughout the Commonwealth. I think of the Ebola crisis, uh, where the government's donated uh, a million pounds in terms of assistance, the UK government being uh, generous, of course, 
uh, too in that regard. I think of the floods in Malawi, where uh, Patricia Ferguson first raised uh, that issue in this chamber, and the government um, uh, has been quick to act uh, in that. And I was hearing from Monica uh, Zonzi earlier on how, that, how well that had been received in Malawi. Uh, to the scholarships for women and young girls that we provide in Pakistan, which I was proud last week to announce an additional year's funding for. 53% of the scholarships we give to Pakistan are to young girls, and 80% of those uh, go to families that earn less than £60 uh, a month, uh, right the way through to our small grants programme, which I also announced just a couple of weeks ago uh, in Malawi, Tanzania, uh, Zambia, India, uh, and Pakistan. I hope that is the legacy that we can continue uh, to promote, uh, whether we're part of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, MSPs, uh, or indeed in the government, but particularly our young Commonwealth. That, I think, will define us, uh, how we grow together, uh, how we continue to show compassion uh, to the most vulnerable throughout our Commonwealth and throughout uh, the world. And I hope uh, the young generation, I'd like to say, as I say, for the next 26 days, perhaps include myself in that bracket, that we uh, take that forward with the guidance of those, of course, uh, who are older and who have helped uh, to bring us to this point. And so thank you very much to the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association for bringing this uh, motion forward. And I wish you continued success and I hope you enjoy uh, your evening reception. Thanks, Chris. Many thanks. And can I thank you all for taking part in this important debate and I now close this meeting of Parliament.